So this is Journey Adventure Quest, uh, sent to me by Triceratops Games. Jesse over there sent it over and had me check it out, and I must admit, I love it. Great game. Even my wife said she'd play it more often. This was definitely one that I see getting to my table quite a bit. It's already been on my table quite a bit, if I'm being honest with you. It's got all the boxes checked off, uh, and I've, I've played a little bit through this to kind of show you how it works. This is a game with a lot of... Um, replayability because it changes up so much now this is a what is it, a one to six player game in the solo mode you kind of play it with the two player varying rules here where you put out eight cards and then uh, one of those eight is face down and you just draft back and forth in the three or more player you'll actually get a hand of cards and you'll pick a card pass it around and you'll keep going until you get one card on each of your boards here now the cool thing about this is the way the cards work is a stack to give you more power or to make the cards stronger and add effects. As you can see over here, I've got three cards stacked up, and these are on my spell slots. And essentially, you would get a card that will start with this, and then you would stack another card on top of that, covering certain parts of it, and then you'd keep going until that card became uh, this decay spell that gave me a wisdom token, a victory point, and an attack token. So once I get those stacked that way, even my armor and weapons do the same thing, I would essentially be able to fight these monsters. And the monsters are very unique in this game as well. So you've got like a menacing hatchling, and if I just defeat this monster, in this deck is a menacing piece of armor of some sort. And if it has that descriptor from up top here, then that's what you're going to look for in here to know that that's the weapon that goes with it, or the armor, or whatever the case is. And it's going to have one slash here, and it's going to be one of these level ones. Now after I defeat this monster, it's typically two rounds of pick and pass, or if you're playing solo or um, two player, two rounds of drafting from the cards that are here in the pool. You'll get three cards per round, and then you'll flip them and, and resolve them one at a time and then place them in their particular armor slots here. There are belts that you can use as well in the game, but if you're not playing with four players, belts don't count. And essentially, the goal is to get the most victory points. You'll fight the monsters. If you beat the monster, you'll get the bounties that's at the bottom as well as their victory point cost. If you don't, then you don't get that. But you don't die. You just take blood damage if you can't block against their attacks and things like that. The person that beats the monster gets the, the spoils. That's pretty much how it is. You're collecting bounties. The beauty of these is that the monsters are different um, levels, and you'll take one level one, one level two, and one level three, and they can be mixed and matched in different ways. But what will happen is once you defeat a monster, you'll actually take this monster, and for the second monster, so the first one's going to have one health, one uh, wisdom, and three attack, worth three victory points and two gold coins. But when you beat it, the second monster is going to stack on top of that. Instead of it being the Menacing Hatchling, it'll now be the Menacing Enraged Worm, worth four health, three victory points, or uh, three wisdom, seven attack, six victory points, and four gold coins. Then you'll take that third monster and add that to the top of the stack. Now it's the, enra uh, the Menacing Enraged Destructive Lava Golem, worth, what is that, seven health, also seven wisdom, 12 attack, and 10 victory points and four gold coins. And if you stacked up enough armor and weapons to be stronger than them, so you'll have to have at least equal to or more than their health, equal to or more than their wisdom, and equal to or more than their attack in order to survive unscathed. But if you can beat it with the attack and wisdom, you can still get the victory points and the, the gold, even if the attack is, is higher than yours. Now, if the attack is higher than your defense, I mean, what will happen is you'll just take blood tokens as damage, and that's negative points at the end of the game. Now, once you finish it, you'll have uh, these journey cards, which are your gear. You'll have adventure cards, which are things you want to accomplish throughout the game that you'll keep secret. You'll get dealt five of these and keep three. The solo mode, the uh, Crimson Knight will get dealt five and keep all five. So he's got the potential to really wax you when it comes to getting victory points. And I've been beaten by him because of that a lot. So essentially what this means is that I have to get three offhand weapons and three helmets to get seven victory points at the end of the game. Not the round, but the whole game, and there's three rounds. This one means I have to get three flame guild uh, spells or pieces of equipment to get three victory points at the end of the game, and three chest armors to get three victory points. And if you have some that have multiple, so like say this card had three uh, chest pieces, and this one had three hand weapons and three chest pieces, I can use those same three chest pieces to satisfy both. At the end of the game, when you tally up all your points, you can record your scores here to see who won. You'll get points for your adventures that you go on, for your journey weapons and, and gear and armor, and for the quest cards that come out. Now, when I say this game checks all the boxes, the non-competitive mode means that we're just 
hey, if you've got this many of this particular type of card, you get this many points. The competitive mode is whoever's got the most of this gets these points. The solo mode has the Crimson Knight as the competitor. The two-player mode just do, does the, you know, lay out the cards here and pick from them. The three and up player means you pick and pass. It's just, it's, it's well done. Very well done. You know, you've got your victory points, your attack tokens, defense tokens, wisdom tokens, blood that represents your damage, and your money cards. That's what you're going to use to pay these things. So what you would do is you get cards laid out here. And some cards say, like, if you flip it at dawn or at noon or at dusk, certain things happen. So playing these cards also matters when you play them on your board because that takes a bigger effect, too, sometimes or gives you more things. So the variability in this game, just the, the replayability, the, the design of it is just really well done. I mean, hats off to you guys over at Triceratops Games. Jesse, thanks for sending us out to me. I highly recommend you guys check it out.